Quite literally, the heart can't miss a beat. It beats about two billion times for a healthy individual over the course of a lifetime. And I think from those dramatic movie scenes where you see a nurse pick up what looks like two giant metal irons and thrust them on a patient's chest and shock them back to life, I think most people have a good sense for how important it is to keep the heart working. And that's the sort of thing that electrophysiologists deal with on a day-to-day basis, the human heart rhythms. And the question is, what directs this rhythm or this pace of our heartbeat? Well, it's this really interesting system of electrical current in the heart, or moving charge, moving ions in the heart. And that's, that's where we'll start. And by the end of this video, you should understand how the heart's conduction system causes it to beat. So I'm going to start trying the heart, and I'd be lying if I said this wasn't sped up a little bit. I'm also just going to draw a t-shirt, this will be in yellow, just to give us some perspective. So we're looking straight at the heart, just like if I were to be facing you in a conversation. Um, I realize this is drawn a little bit large. Most hearts are about the size of a human fist, but this will be a perfectly fine model to learn about the conduction system. And what we need to remember is that the heart is the body's blood pump. That's its essential function. And thinking about CPR helps me remember this function, because when the heart stops working, we perform CPR. And what are we doing? Well, we're, well, we're manually pushing on someone's chest to squeeze the blood out of their heart. So instead of the heart pumping itself to squeeze blood and push it to the rest of the body, we're literally pushing on their chest to do the job that the heart isn't doing. So that is one way that I remember the heart's function. It's the body's blood pump. So as a pump, the heart receives old blood from what are called the vena cava, and I'll just draw these in blue so we know that that's old blood, blood that has already made its way to the body and is returning to the heart to be pumped out again. And so the blood fills one of these top chambers. In this video, I'm going to talk about just the top and bottom chambers. So the top chamber receives this blood and squeezes so that the blood that was drained into this top chamber gets pushed into the bottom chambers. And then those bottom chambers squeeze so that the blood that originally got drained into the top chamber, squeezed from the top to the bottom, now is being squeezed by the bottom chamber and pushed out into the body through what is called an aorta. I'm just going to draw that in orange. And that's a vessel that leads to all the different parts of the body. And that's how the heart acts as a blood pump, which we know is its essential function. And again, we also know that if our heart stops pumping old blood out to the body, we die. So it's our heart's electrical current system that makes sure that our heart is always beating. And that's why what electrophysiologists do is, is really important. It also happens to be really interesting. To understand our heart's conduction system, I'm just actually going to first erase some of these extra diagrams. Get a clean, simple picture, great. So now we know that our top chamber receives blood from the body, and then that top chamber squeezes, pushing the blood into our bottom chambers. And these bottom chambers then contract, pushing blood out to the body. And the cycle continues. The heart receives blood on top, that blood gets pushed to the bottom and then pushed out to the body and returns to the heart. So we know then that our heart's conduction system has to be set up such that the top chamber squeeze or contract. Then there has to be a delay so that the blood from the top can get, be pushed into the bottom and then the bottom chambers contract. So the bottom chambers are contracting when they're full with blood and pushing blood out to the body. So it turns out that in the top right chamber, there's something called the sinoatrial node. And it's been called the internal pacemaker for the heart. So think of it as a light switch. It's the light switch that starts the electrical signal that causes the heart to beat. My heart, for example, beats at 62 beats per minute. That means that my sinoatrial node is firing electrical signals 62 times every minute. So when this sinoatrial node fires and starts an electrical signal, that electrical signal quickly travels to the entire top chamber. And this is because the top chamber is an interconnected network of cells. So the electrical signal can very easily spread between these interconnected cells. And once an electrical signal hits one of these cells, that cell contracts. And this is due to calcium ion movement. We can talk about it later. But what's important to know is that when that electrical signal hits a cell, it contracts. And that's what causes the entire top chamber to contract at the same time or squeeze at the same time. The electrical signal spreads from the sinoatrial node, the light switch as we're calling it in the heart, and spreads to the entire top chamber, causing the top chamber to contract. Then, the electrical signal passes through an area called the AV node. And notice that the electrical signal didn't pass directly to the bottom chamber as well. 
And that's because the top chamber and the bottom chamber are electrically isolated. So the electrical signal can't travel From directly the top to the bottom chambers, but instead has to travel through the AV node. And why is that important? Well, it allows time for the blood to fill that bottom chamber. Once it goes through the AV node, the electrical signal then follows a very specific path between the two bottom chambers and makes its way up both sides of the chambers and causes the bottom chambers to contract. So the AV node allow, it delays the signal, allowing the blood from the top chambers to move to the bottom chambers. And then once the signal gets through the AV node, the bottom chambers contract and they're full with blood and they push all that blood to the body. And so I think one easy and interesting way to understand this is through an electrocardiogram. Because if you understand this pattern of conduction, which I think you do, you can now understand an electrocardiogram. So I'm going to run through the conduction again, but this time I'm going to color code the heart's electrical conduction to show how this current system corresponds to an electrocardiogram. So to review, something we already know, the heartbeat starts in the sinoatrial node, or the heart's pacemaker, or light switch as we're calling it, and spreads that electrical signal throughout the entire top chamber. So on an electrocardiogram, anytime there is a movement of electrical charge, this flat line moves up or down. So this first peak represents the electrical charge from the sinoatrial node spreading down the top chambers. And we know what's happening when the top chamber receives this electrical signal. It's contracting to push that blood into the bottom chambers. Then we remember that the electrical signal can't actually pass straight to the bottom chambers, but must instead pass through the AV node. And it just so happens that that electrical signal, as we talked about, moves very slowly through the AV node, so it's not traveling very far. And because of that, the electrocardiogram line is relatively flat. So people call this the AV delay, and they're referring to the delay in the conduction at the AV node. But then the electrical signal gets through the AV node and into the bottom chambers where the signal travels between the two chambers to the bottom of the heart and back up the sides, causing both chambers to contract. And we already know that the two chambers are already full with blood from the top chambers, so this blood gets pushed to the body. And we see that in these bottom chambers, the electrical signal travels a pretty big distance. And so for that reason, there's this tall, sharp peak in the electrocardiogram. And the last little peak is a little bit more complicated. It's the repolarizing effect in the bottom chambers and not really important to understand for this exercise. So just ignore that one for now. But really, if we understand these three parts of the electrocardiogram, the top chambers contracting represents the first pump. Then there's the AV node or the AV delay where the electrical signal is pretty much paused. It's not moving very quickly. And then there's the large peak representing the bottom chambers contracting, that electrical signal traveling down the bottom chambers, you understand an electrocardiogram. So with that, there you have it. That is the basis of what electrophysiologists do on a daily basis, and it's really interesting and not that difficult to understand.